Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Center. Yeah. Today we are presenting a case of a 29 year old male who presented to ER with alleged history of skid and fall from bike followed by uh, the pain, swelling and inability to move of the uh, movement of the left knee. So uh, initial 10 second assessment as a vitals was stable, patient was triaged to green area and patient came in wheelchair. Okay. So uh, uh, the history is like patient had a history of, uh, history of skid and fall from bike, he fell on the left side he was a helmeted rider no head injury no loss of consciousness initially he was able to mobilize by himself but later after a few hours he was having a pain swelling and inability to mobilize the left knee okay uh, so uh, we are coming directly going to uh, isolated uh, knee joint okay. examination so, so abcd is fine you have done the primary survey there is no life threatening or limb threatening injuries. injuries so we have uh, so any adjuncts was not necessary, necessary at this point of time so we have gone directly to the knee joint yes, examination. Sir. Maybe you would have given some analgesics yes, for him yes. before you started Certainly. examination in the patient. So, what would be an ideal analgesic? Paracetamol. NSAIDs yes, or paracetamol. Yes, or uh, if the patient have severe pain, you can okay, even think yes, of giving of a higher analgesic. Opioids okay, can sir. be given uh, with an antiemetic. So, that is the first step. Then, we have an isolated injury. Yes, what will be the first thing that you wanted to do? Maybe you can put an ice pack because the patient is having pain. And maybe you would have splinted, uh, put some splint over the uh, joint line because uh, the patient might be having movements while uh, we'll have pain while movements okay so now we have started examining it since it's a mannequin it's easy for us so what are the steps of examination of a knee joint uh, initially we have to introduce the my, uh, myself to the patient yeah. and then have to take a consent and expose the patient from mid thigh to the lower limb and then the most important thing, as you said rightly, we have to take concern and majority of the time what will not be concerned regarding the pain of the patient. So the pain management is very, very crucial. So we have to address that pain management. Okay. Even if uh, it can be an OSCE station for you, even if somebody is asking you to just examine in the knee joint, you have to think in the terms that the patient is having a pain okay. and uh, you have to offer him analgesics. Then only you should start examining the knee joint. And most importantly, if it's a female patient, you should female. ask for an assistance. So these things you keep in your mind, if, especially if it's a male doctor who is going to examine a female doctor, always ask for a chaperone. So it has been a standard OSCE station in knee joint examination. So the first thing you introduce yourself to the patient and uh, you ask, uh, is he comfortable and you explain the procedure, maybe not in very much detail and maybe a written consent is not required. A verbal consent is more than enough that you can go ahead with the examination and pain management you offer him analgesic if it's okay that he doesn't need analgesic you can go ahead and examine but it's always best that you offer him analgesics you give him some analgesic then you start with the examination and as you rightly said expose the patient very well uh, complete knee joint expose always it's better to examine with the other side open both the side you can compare so if you have right joint knee joint pain you always keep the left knee joint also exposed so they can can compare and contrast starting from your inspection your uh, palpation all those things you can do you can have an it's a traumatic condition you can have a traumatic knee joint also coming in like septic arthritis or uh, you can have an uh, a effusion into the knee joint suddenly coming up. So all those things you need to compare the, both the knee joints. So it's always best practice to expose it very well. Then. So coming to inspection, first we have to see the uh, skin over the uh, both bilateral, both knees have to be simultaneously examined. So okay. we have to see the skin over the uh, knee joint and if there is any swelling or any deformity uh, or any uh, external abrasion, external injuries, anything. Uh, and then uh, the um, attitude of the limb also to be uh, most mostly if uh, there is any ligament injury will be the, the knee will be slightly flexed to 10 to 20 degrees okay and uh, coming to palpation uh, we have to palpate initially uh, any inspection for, anything else that you wanted to look in for Position of the patella, position of the patella, where exactly it is located. So the position of the patella is very important. That you, it's a simple inspectory findings. So it's a patella dislocation. Maybe you will just able to see by your inspection itself. From the routine place, it is being displaced. Effusion definitely you will be able to get, and skin changes if anything. Trauma we are not expecting any change, skin changes immediately. But if it is a septic arthritis, definitely redness and all those things you are expecting. Okay. And also the popliteal fossa should also be examined. Examined. <coughs> and then coming to palpation. Initially we have to uh, see for the uh, any local rise of temperature and then uh, if uh, if there is effusion we have to we have two tests to do effusion uh, first one is the um, cross fluctuation 
that is the, there will be uh, suprapatellar fossa uh, it will be the uh, the effusion will be mostly in supine position it will be there so uh, have to place the arm uh, over the suprapatellar bursa and then uh, the both hands both fingers over the bilateral both sides of the patella and this just cross fluctuation just press the uh, that is a cross fluctuation and then uh, the patellar tap for patellar tap initially we have to milk from the suprapatellar bursa and with three fingers we have to just push down the patella so we'll get a buoyancy like and then a click come back and then we have to look so when you have minimal <laughs> uh, knee joint effusion the best thing will be the to milk the patella and do the patella tap when you have gross swelling no need when you have minimal swelling we are not very sure you can do the milking and just see how the uh, patella tap flex okay then uh, look for the bony tenderness mm. first uh, we have to uh, be the from uh, which are the bony tenderness that you wanted to but you can say either medial to lateral or yes. lateral to medial which are is comfort fibular head mm. uh, tibial tuberosity mm. then bilateral side of the uh, uh, the uh, patella the ten, uh, uh, tendon uh, mm. of the um, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm. and then tibial tuberosity yeah. and then patella bilateral sides mm. then uh, both femoral condyles mm. and also the joint lines joint line. medial, medial and lateral, lateral joint, joint lines. lines it's very important medial <laughs> and lateral joint lines you need to examine so all the key bony points are very very important because uh, which injury you can easily miss in a knee joint which is the most commonly missed knee joint injury Plateau injury of tibial. tibial plateau fractures. Tibial plateau fractures we can easily miss. Sometimes we, we are taking an x-ray, we will not be able to find any deformity. But the only thing that gives an idea is with your in inspection, uh, palpation, that time there is a tenderness. And if x-ray is not very clear, if it is undisplaced and all, tibial plateau fractures, we we'll might find some difficulty. That time you need to take a CT and all. So always clinical examination is very important in all the cases, but in specifically this bony point tenderness you need to look it for. The, uh, and then uh, look for the uh, uh, neurovascular uh, okay uh, distal neurovascular so what are the major structures that you are concerned uh, that can get injured following a knee joint injury you can have dislocation you can have fractures so what are the major structures that you are concerned the distal neurovascular injuries uh, popliteal artery mm. is the uh, one thing so we have to for uh, uh, looking for the popliteal artery uh, uh, dislocations and then fractures and uh, will cause a popliteal artery injury. So popliteal artery, the palpation is like where we have to flex the knee and then uh, with the both fingers just deeply palpate for the look for the pulse. Uh, and then uh, it is a uh, then the uh, then fibular head. Fibular head, the common peroneal nerve is the most commonly injured Perfect. nerve. Uh, it will be the uh, food drop will be there and the sensation will be lost in the first web space. So that is also very important. Okay. And mostly okay. important, one thing is that if the first thing what you want to assess in any danger is gait actually. Gait. Because this patient was unable to weight bear, we didn't do that. So actually it should start everything with the gait examination, then only we, we actually missed that in the initial part. Okay, fine. Uh, and then coming to, uh, so we will uh, see the bony tenderness okay. and then uh, the next thing is uh, for special test for the ligaments. Okay. So uh, special test, again the concern here it is, if it is like a fracture and all, if you are suspecting it will be really painful to do this special test. So you might not be able to do any of this test. But if it is a sports related injury, only you will have certain movements will cause pains. So other movements you will be able to elicit. So special test you will be able to perform in those conditions. Maybe somebody is walking down the stairs suddenly have a twisting of the knee joint or suddenly it's a post sports related injuries and all you will be able to examine the knee joint reasonably well but for a fracture cases it will be difficult even for patella dislocation the patient might be in excruciating pain maybe while doing your manipulation the patella will get automatically relocated and the pain will subside so let's imagine that we are having a patient with uh, without any bony fractures and we are going about to uh, do an uh, examination of the soft tissue structures in and around the knee joint so so, what are the structures that you want to examine and how will you examine these structures? Uh, there are mainly six uh, soft tissue structures. There are uh, anterior cruciate ligament, posterior cruciate ligament, medial collateral ligament, lateral collateral ligament and two meniscus, medial and lateral meniscus. So, with uh, first, in, uh, the most commonly injured is the anterior cruciate ligament. So, uh, for anterior cruciate ligament, there are mainly two tests that is anterior drawer test and last man test. In anterior drawer test, we usually do at, uh, the knee and uh, hip should be flexed. So 20 to 30 degree flex. flex and then uh, we have ideally we have to sit on the foot of the patient and then or another person can support, support. them and then uh, by uh, placing the uh, thumbs both thumbs over the tibial tuberosity we, we have to just find uh, 
anteriorly just uh, try to pull try to pull out the thing. so we will get a giveaway feeling if there is anterior cruciate ligament injury and for posterior cruciate ligament we will do the same thing and posteriorly we will just pu push uh, and, and so you will be able to feel the sagging of the sagging of the uh, tibial, tibial head tibial. And then uh, last man test, since this will be very painful, so uh, in anterior cruciate uh, ligament we can use last man test also. Last man test will use, uh, the uh, angle will be uh, 10, uh, 10 to 15 degrees, that is the most comfortable position of the knee. So we have to keep the uh, both, uh, one hand over the, uh, above, above the, the knee, knee and then another with, with, with the same uh, procedure is done by the, uh, placing Pulling the hand. Pulling it up and putting it down. So this is a anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate. So anterior drawers, posterior drawers and the latchman test. test. Yeah. And then coming to collateral ligaments, that is medial and lateral collateral ligament. For this also, we have to uh, flex the knee about 30 degrees and then uh, by uh, placing uh, the medial collateral ligament will be uh, preventing the uh, uh, lateral uh, displacement. So for uh, stress test, it should be given laterally. So we will give a valgus. Uh, valgus stress, valgus test. stress test. So, if there is a give, give away feeling or there is pain, tenderness over the, there will be medial collateral ligament injury. For lateral collateral ligament, we will give a varus stress test. So, it will be opened up or it will, there will be pain. So, this is a uh, for the for medial the, collateral and, and the lateral, lateral collateral, collateral ligament. Then, next one is a uh, McMurray test. test. McMurray test is for uh, cruciate ligament, uh, meniscus. So, uh, for this, we will, the, the position is same like the valgus and varus test. So, we will position 30 degrees and we will give a, uh, for, uh, uh, we will for give medial a val meniscus. medial meniscus, valgus and then uh, lateral rotation. And for uh, lateral meniscus, there will be varus and medial, medial rotation. rotation. So, if there is pain, it is. Uh, then there is a, a please grinding test that usually you don't do that will be in prone position, prone position. and the, we will flex the knee and then just we will grind the same like uh, Macmurray uh, we are trying to look for the meniscal injury meniscal again injury. but uh, the most common injury is what ACL injury okay. uh, is the most common one that we can easily elicit in the ED Macmurray's test is also very easy once in a, in a go you can actually examine every of those things we need not go back and do it one so the patient is 30 to 40 degrees flex the knee joint every time you can just do all the tests together and you can finish it off and you can come to a conclusion so it's a quick six test that what we need to do for the six structures one one test is enough we, we don't know there are a lot of named tests but just one one test is more than enough to check for the ligament instability then how will you go about uh, the next step so uh, coming next is uh, any imaging mm -hmm. uh, so uh, again the ottawa, ottawa uh, knee rule, knee rule. And pittsburgh knee rule for a tavern knee rule, uh, we have to, any one of the uh, points should be uh, positive. If the patient is more than age, age more than 55 years, and if there is uh, uh, tenderness over the uh, pattern, body, point uh, body point tenderness, and then uh, if the knee patient cannot flex the knee up to 90 degrees, and then if the patient is not able to bear weight for four steps in knee. So you have to take an X-ray. Yes, so Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh is like, uh, if there is a fall, history of fall or blunt trauma, if there is no history, no need of X-rays. If there is a uh, history of fall or blunt trauma, look for the age it is less than 12 or more than 50 if it is not there no need of x-ray if it is there uh, if it is there we need an x-ray if it is not there x-ray then just uh, whether patient can bear weight or uh, for four steps then if it is also not there no need of x-ray okay which all views that you want ideally uh, AP uh, knee AP lateral is the most probably we take then uh, town town is uh, uh, skyline uh, skyline, skyline view. view is there for patella patella for skyline view lateral. usually OA osteoarthritis and all we can do that but skyline view it might be difficult in a trauma situation the patient might be having pain it might be difficult but you are able to do that well and good Oblique view. Oblique view you can take instead of that. AP lateral oblique view and most clinical thing what I told is the tenderness. Yeah. Bony point tenderness. tenderness you have to elicit. When you have a suspicion, get an X-ray, bony point tenderness still persisting. Go ahead and uh, do a CT. The tibial plateau fractures that last time also we had a patient but we couldn't easily find out that in the X-ray. But sometimes this will be a deep fractures we might not be able to see. It is undisplaced we can miss these fractures. So, what happened to this patient ultimately? Uh, actually, initially we uh, did a <coughs> uh, x-ray. So, there was a, uh, an uh, x-ray was not showing any obvious fractures, but he was having this pain. Uh, anterior cruciate, uh, this ligament injury was uh, with anterior droid test and okay. test was positive. So, we did a CT MRI, uh, MRI with CT correlation. So, it was having an ACL tear with a chip fracture. So, initially he was having that uh, uh, external aberrations was there. So, they discharged with antibiotics and after two weeks, the, he came back and then uh, arthroscopic uh, reattachment okay. was done. Okay, so it is a chip fracture because of that uh, pull of the tendon, uh, that uh, ACL, there was a small chip fracture. So after that, he is fine. He now. is fine. Okay, so 
Uh, what is the take home message that you want to tell regarding knee joint injuries? Uh, examination is the main key for ligament injuries. Uh, and uh, because the tenderness, joint line tenderness is should be we should not miss. And then uh, the regarding the Ottawa knee rules for the X-rays, uh, if at all if we are suspecting a ligament injury, we should be going for MRI. Okay. Seat. And always remember other joints involved also. Don't just hesitate that you only have one joint injury. Always it's better to do one joint above and one joint below Hello. because of these injuries we we should not be missing since it's a direct fall from bike skid and fall we had only injury over this one but he can have other injuries also there can be another cervical spine dose so don't forget your ABCD uh, uh, cervical spine immobilization and all in any trauma cases okay so the six tests that what you introduce the six structures ACL PCS. Anterior cruciate ligament, posterior cruciate ligament, medial. then you have the medial collateral, lateral collateral and the lateral and the medial meniscus. Fine. Thank you.